Mm. Mm. All right. Oh, heavens. Uh. <sighs> All right, let's get started. things on right anyway okay hello everyone my name is Paolo Chasa, and welcome to Weekly Manga Drawing... Really? Manga Drawing Lessons Weekly. I just realized that this is in the wrong way around. Uh, anyway. Welcome to Manga Drawing Lessons Weekly, hosted by the Govins Branch of the Enoch Pratt Free Library. Um, again, my name is Paolo Chasa, I'll be your instructor today. And we're just going to go through a very quick run round rundown of all the things that we're doing today. First things first, uh, on the Enoch Pratt for Library free library website, this is the <clears throat> our home with all the event uh, event details, and our purpose today is to learn how to draw anime and manga characters step by step in weekly sessions. Build up a binder of your best drawings, be a real artist. Supplies for the program will be available at the Govins branch and first come first serve basis while supplies last. Now <clears throat> So essentially, if you want to do this on traditional, um, traditionally rather, on um, pencil, paper, erasers, uh, markers, and what have you, we do have that available for you at the at the Govins uh, at the Govins branch. Just ask me, why a librarian there, and we'll get you started. Anyway, today's session um, are as is as follows. Essentially, we have a whole bunch of these um, lessons that we went through um, the past. <laughs> I think I've been streaming for about a year and a half now. Um, now that we moved in-house instead of my home, essentially, um, we've created these uh, lessons from various um, uh, from various. Um, how to draw manga books and art books from the library that you can borrow uh, that you can borrow from the library first things first is all these lessons from uh, mastering manga by mark Riley, and we've already went through these like lessons one two lessons um six i believe and we moved on to a second book called which is right here called The Complete Guide to Drawing Action Manga by Shoko and Makoto Sawa. Again, av available at your local library. Um, you basically scanned in some of the important parts and pages of this uh, of this book, and we're just going through like the lessons of how to draw various things the way they want to draw them, uh, rather, rather in the techniques that are like given in said book. Um, oh, actually. That just reminds me. I am like this is a sidebar to this particular lesson. I am actually going through um up the music a little bit more. I'm actually like creating a short a small database available to everyone here uh, in the MDL um Manga Drawing Lessons Weekly like Google Drive, as you see here, uh called Art Tutorials and Book um, book recommendations which is a um what's called a, a google docs that you can look through and use as a reference for like not just books but um other 
uh, other resources online on learning how to draw bank and anime characters and how to learn and learn how to like art in general it's not quite done yet um we're still getting there in terms of all the other um resources that i'm going through for example there's a short list of youtube channels that i would recommend uh some of them are like less art school than others for example proko and drawbox tend to be a little bit more like oh this is like actual art lessons while drawing with waffles and laovan are like short tutorials for specific things occasionally and other but otherwise like oh this is uh let's let me do um uh, let me create a character with only three different marker colors or something um and there's a good mix of that and all the channels that i'm going to put here um, there's a, a tutorial tutorial website, so I'm hopefully going to find some more. The, uh, the main one I suggest is Drawbox. Very hard, but otherwise very well worth your time. And of course, some book recommendations, because at the end of the day, this is indeed a library. Um, recommend, um, there should be some anime technique books here that I'll add a little later that would include like books like these. Um, classic technique technique books like Andrew Loomis, um, Betty Edwards, and you know Stan Lee, and of course art books that I highly recommend just looking through because they're very fun to look through. Anyway, this is here available for you uh, in the MDL weekly lessons. Um, every YouTube video should have, um, every one of these videos should have a link to um, this Google folder, uh, so Google Drive, so you can look through them and um, use them as a, re as a reference guide. But um, I think our main thing today, uh, our main thing today is continuing on the lesson eight, essentially. Um, there are a lot of lessons in the, like, uh, what's called in these ones, what's called in this book particularly. But I think the main one we're going uh, we're going through is basically how to draw like very specific action poses and uh, very specific action poses, and I think just how to draw them and how to draw them properly, rather how to draw them, how to use them in your own art, that sort of thing. Let's see. I think we last left off with this one with this pose, and I think we only kind of started, um, nope, not that one. <laughs> uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, there it is. Right, I'm going to switch over to CSP, which is the main drawing program that I'm using for the se uh, for these sessions. Uh, CSP is known as Cliff Studio Paint. It is what, my copy of Studio Paint, not Cliff Studio Paint. Um, and it's just like a very, um, very good digital drawing platform. Uh, hopefully it will expand to other um, digital software in order to continue like going through these lessons and all that but for now we're going to use clip studio paint when we're doing digital drawings if you're doing traditional i'd recommend just using um you know pencil and paper um slightly better paper than copy paper if you can find it like a sketchbook or a um what's called like more robust uh a more robust paper and we have uh plenty of that in the govins branch just ask me and i can always provide some more like decent quality drawing paper not like a big stack of course but like a couple of, like maybe a smaller stack of like a few sheets that can you can take home and continue i'm just readjusting my seat because instead of like the static chair that i've had for the longest time i actually brought down my um my desk chair from my um, cubicle, uh, my cubicle on the back, because it's like if you're sitting here for any for a period any longer than say 10, 20 minutes, and you're someone who looks like me, it it gets bad. And having good lumbar support, like having good support in general, is one of those things that you don't think about um, when you're. There, I'm trying to make sure that my levels are okay on um, OBS Studio. Yep, we're okay. 
having good support is one or one of those having good support um when you're drawing is one of those physical things you don't think about until like oh my back hurts because i've been crouched over my drawing tablet or my sketchbook for the past hour and oh no i feel terrible ah it's bad it can get very bad anyway let's look let's look at our sketch so as you can see we basically at, we're at the second phase of drawing i picked a random character um ooh, la, la. Uh, we're basically at the we already set up uh the the running pose of set up a running pose oh yeah we basically set up a nope basically set up a running pose oh i deleted it oh no um basic set up a running pose for um it's called sailor mercury here and now we're at a point where we're adding a little bit more uh, a little bit more detail to how it's called to her costume just to show that she is indeed running and dashing forward um but i think we kind of get the gist here um let's go we kind of get the gist here we kind of know like uh, oh this is what this is what that looks like oh this is um like this is how to do it um we're gonna move on to a different uh, pose okay just making sure that okay stream is okay okay we are going to move on to a different pose ah, la, la, la. okay which one should we do um oh um i should mention oh the book mentions this um so um if you're going to get into drawing and just basic human anatomy and figure drawing and all that, you're going to learn this word, contra uh, contraposto. Essentially, it's how humans naturally tend to lean on like one of um, like one of their legs or to shift their body weight on a particular point instead of like always the doing the like straight both hands on the ground like this pose or like a T pose. Nobody does that in real life. Usually they're relaxed. Um, if they're leaning on a wall, you tend to lean um, what's called on your one of your legs, unless you're actively doing it with your two legs, that sort of thing. Um, it's to let's go. It's to create a symmetry in your drawings because symmetry kind of um, makes the drawing look like kind of bland and samey unless you're looking for that same effect otherwise like you notice that the um if you notice like the leg here is like all the weight is on this leg but um it's kind of uh left leg right arm and then left arm right leg are in like opposite corners like that it kind of makes like a feeling of movement and kind of and like makes your drawings a little bit more um a realistic and have more movement which is ironic considering it's all um still images but it kind of gives it that sense of movement regardless um same thing happens how it's called same thing kind of happens here um the next bit just shows us that oh um running doesn't need to be that extreme or at least in that perspective usually when you're running it's like up and down up and down as opposed to just unless you're the flash or something in a dc movie but usually you're not um i think a female version <laughs> um so again the male or female thing really doesn't it doesn't really matter these are general guidelines for gender not necessarily like hard and fast rules um i think the main point that they have is like to make sure the expression is familiar and if your character regardless of gender identity is has long hair or has hair that they move and bob um rather kind of move in the same way that you would if you were like taking a photo of somebody um oops, i think i hit my did i hit my microphone yeah i did oops um taking a photo of somebody i just won't Womp, 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 etc. Oh, they make a good point here. 
the body leans naturally forward when running. You set to uh, create an impression of speed, pull the chin back, etc. Dashing and sprinting. Oh, geez. These are really good poses. Um, in the book itself, I think, let me double check. I know that I think in the book itself, if, ah, there it is. In the book itself, you actually have this um, part where you can photocopy where um, you can essentially use parts of it to trace um, in order to kind of like practice these um, complicated poses. Um, they don't have to be perfect. In fact, basically we're kind of doing the same thing, but instead of tracing them, we're using one of the poses as a reference and then adding our own spin to it as a different character. And that's completely fine. That's <laughs> that's completely legal. Um, you can certainly use these as references or use them as tracing, but so long as you make sure to like say, oh, I traced this from X, Y, and Z. Like I didn't completely, I, I referenced this X, Y, and Z as for the pose, uh, because it's called, it's one thing to like trace something and say you traced it. And then quite another thing to trace something and say, oh, I completely came up with this. Like, mm, probably not. Okay. I think it's going to continue going on about rear view and perspective, a dashing and sprinting. And it's like, if you're at the point, um, and rather we should be at the point if we were following these lessons, at the point where like you can dash, not, not dash, but rather, um, you can practice enough to a point where you can um, draw things not just like on one plane and one angle, but also in perspective. Um, I think there's a last lesson that it literally draws you a box uh, that shows you like, oh, if you put it like this, this is where all the bits and places go. Um, this is essentially what's happening. Oh, that's what's happening here. Kind of show you the vanishing point of where the thing is, of where the poses are, just to show like an increase in speed when you're blocking in your uh, various. Uh, what's called your various poses oh i love this by the way it's such an extreme like angle because you're basically at a snail point as a uh, worm's eye view watching somebody run like and then his, their head is like all the way up top there it's an extremely bold angle and really really cool um but also kind of doesn't leave much to you um much for like details since it's so far away like oh It'd be cool if you can draw your character in this, but it doesn't show your costumes at all, and it's not great. <laughs> so, for example, oh, they mentioned eye level. Um, so eye level is um refers to how high something, like where something is viewed. For example, I already mentioned the worm's eye view is basically from the ground up. A uh, regular eye view is like, um, you know, when you're walking and just basic at human eye level. A bird's eye view is from the top down. And I think, is there a bird? Yeah, th this is like the bird's eye view. You're seeing somebody run like this. <laughs> I love to actually show the butt here. So butts are very important for running. I should also mention that. Um, not just like in drawing, but also like, <laughs> your butt is mostly muscle. Um, and that's the reason why you're always upright. So thank your butt for that. Anyway. Ah, okay. So we're at here, uh, the dashing and sprinting part. Um, if you notice, like the other thing, I've uh, recommended um, the art of Overwatch. Now, Blizzard Activision as a company, not that great. Um, but like, I really did love Overwatch as a video uh, video game. Um, and one of my favorite characters. Oh, well, I, I like I like I like majority of the characters. Like one of my favorite characters really is like May, uh, May and Brigitte. Um, but like the face of the game has always been Tracer from Overwatch, and like let's use um, let's use her as a um, let's use her as a way of um, practicing these dash. Um, let's call these dashing and sprinting, um, uh, dashing and um, sprinting things. Um, uh, let's do this one. Let's do this one first. 
might do this one next week or the week after because I just love that like straight at you pose like they're running absolutely at your face it's gonna be great okay now that we know what we're actually like drawing today let's go back uh oh, you know what it's very quickly all right Why did I draw Amy so sad in this one? Uh, okay, that's fine. Nope. So this was our uh, sketch in practice for today. What up? Reference image later. For now, we go ahead and this here so we can use it as a reference photo. Or rather, use a pose as a reference. Alright. do that okay 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 so I just learned a new uh, trick basically if you want to reset the um, zoom level uh, if you want to reset the zoom level on CSP it's uh, space uh, space tab which is nice okay uh, where do I start Start at this chest bit. No, that's wrong. realize the guy I'm referencing is like um, running in his like he's running in his slippers which is a bananas and B good luck trying not to slip bud he was a little wonky but I like it you're trying to draw this thing at the same like if you're trying hard to try and figure out like oh how do the muscles move oh uh, just try to put yourself in the same pose but you know carefully uh for example like when you're like doing i think 
uh, right arm first and the left arm back like that. You can definitely feel that there's a smaller bump here than the larger bump here in terms of because you're really crunching up your uh, biceps here, while here it's more your triceps um, like going out, um, going up and out to kind of give you that like running feeling. But again, this is just very simple construction. Uh, we're probably going to adjust a little bit more as we find... great about this body is um, when I add a head to it, it will kind of um, inform how small or how large the figure is. If I make a head that's like a little a little bit bigger than this, kind of imply that this, this person is like a huge hulking figure with huge muscles. But if I make... head a little bigger like that and it's basically like a small kid. I kind of want to strike um, like a good balance between head too big and head too small because technically uh, Tracer, the character in Overwatch, is um, like kind of a like petite young woman. But also, she is an adult, and therefore, like...
Okay, first two left of destruction. Does it look weird when you flip it over like this? Not really. Kinda. Kind of. Still a little iffy about this bit. drawn on one screen and then the other the actual like reference photo on the other um i think the arm needs to be higher yeah i think the arm needs to be way higher Accidentally deleted the face. Bit of foreshortening here. They're facing like that way ish. Seems okay. Run that. Also do this with your. Um, uh, technically, you can also do this with your um, uh, traditional art, but it's a little more difficult. Um, Just add the other bits onto it as soon as we can. Anyway, so that's basically um, doing a little bit of like construction on this particular dash and sprinting. Now, at this stage, it's still very rough, which is why I'm able to do something as like severe as select a chunk of it and distort it as I see fit, because we have still uh, have other layers to go through. 
you see in the style of um, going through, like iterating through the details before um, when we made the um, what's it called the other character uh, other characters with Amy Miz Ami 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 Mizuno last week when we were just like making sure all the like the underlying body was correct before putting on like the costume the face the details um, because it's at this point where like it's good to like make sure everything is correct very first because you don't want to be adding in fine detail on a leg that looks wrong after you've added like some hours worth of rendering that would very plainly suck and that's not great so i'm going to do the flip thing again that looks a little better i feel like i'm not really 100 percent happy with it that's probably because um only probably because why am i not happy with it hold on because of this elbow yeah, i think it was the elbow i feel, I feel like that's fixed it all a little better there we go i think it was the elbow yeah i think it was the elbow those biceps later should fix the head let's take out the tracer hair for now it's the head a little bit in terms of like positioning we just need to zoom in some more
that's her. That's Tracer Overwatch. <laughs> and make sure that we're in the right layer. Okay, thank god. Made a mistake last week, we'll make it again. Right? Right? how noticeably skinny she actually is. It's really, really tiny. Okay, hold on. Might need to change a couple of things, especially with this construction now that I've looked at the uh, tr Tracer reference photo. Um, let's see. Might be able to free distort this a little bit. skew this a little bit. No, that's not what I want. I want to distort. Actually, make her wider. Oops. have a completely different feel to uh, what your construction is and then just add another layer to it again I should stress the only really point that you can only time and point where you can do this is really at the basic construction level if you try to do this with a fully rendered image it's not gonna work as well and it'll feel a little icky and weird because all those details that you've rendered at a certain angle get uh, lopsidedly skewed and distorted uh, in order to kind of fit like the rest of the other things and it, it's not great which is why it's best to do it at this angle <sighs> I hate having bones bones that crack bones that bleed okay this is the draw directly. Pierce? 
pay much attention to like this particular character model. I know, I was too busy playing books like Junk Rat. Sometimes shenanigans that your hair is like always like that. I don't want to say that it's time shenanigans. It'd be more fun if it was time shenanigans. Makes sense. If you're a speedster. You're gonna need something to protect your delicate eyeballs. I just realized this character, much like Kingdom Hearts, is half straps. And then, like, all of her kit is just like. Oh, uh. All of her kits are, like, strapped on. Bananas. Which makes sense. Again, speedster. But, like, <laughs> it's just very funny. This is.
basically half straps. <laughs> Shoes uncomfy and gone. Drawn shoes I like a that weird angle before. <sighs> oh shoot, it's like five minutes too. Okay, so just to reiterate the point that we've made, um, as we were just going through, just adding a little bit more detail. Um the best um like in terms of the ratio versus of how much time spent making sure it's correct and like how much more time you'll need to uh, correct it afterwards is basically a high ratio for um, like the very first construction base sketch it's so much easier to fix something initially just when it kind of looks or feels wrong um, and then rather than afterwards where you're going to have like erase an all wholly fully rendered arm because it looked wrong or have to erase it and then re-render it um, a little later when initially like your first sketch make is, um, makes it look okay and then the details just layer on a little better um, as you're as you're working through is super useful when it comes to um, again more completed um, drawings like this um, that is useful um, advice for anyone like um, for anyone like drawing or like rendering uh, anime or manga characters or even like video game characters. Um, the foundation level needs to be the most stable. Otherwise, no matter how fancy you're rendering on top of it, it's like it's gonna look weird after after looking through it which is why your best the best investment of time you can put in your drawing is on the construction layer first I highly recommend doing that to any of your pieces when you like start uh, when you first start off like make sure that everything looks right like when it's just like a stick man um, before adding so much more detail that kind of can't figure out what's wrong but when you realize like oh it's because the arm is a little off that sort of thing and you can fix that initial layer preparation and fundamentals always always work uh, always give the most um, return of investment in terms of stuff you can fix in a drawing like for example had I like fully rendered out this uh, tracer costume before realizing the um, like the um, arm looked a little weird without like resizing it first then what wasted so much more time rather than just sketching it and skewing it a little bit more just to make sure like oh yeah this feels like a good solid base um anyway that's all the time we have for today because i only get an hour per week unfortunately um if i can do this for hours every week i would absolutely love to do so and yet here we are anyway um we're I'm torn between continuing this and adding more rendering layer or going through like another example of like a sprint and dash pose in order to continue doing it. Um, we'll see how I feel next week. For now. Alright. Uh, uh. chat.
but yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and call that a day for now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here at uh, Govan's branch of the Enoch Pratt Library for uh, Manga Drawing Lessons Weekly. We'll be here again next week. Uh, hopefully we'll continue on that same lesson to iterate more of more on the things we're talking about. Uh, maybe, like, after doing that particular one, we'd go through um, the next steps, which I think should be the next lesson, like the next part of the book, um, that just goes through like oh how the um, how the artist renders uh, renders all of these things and adds detail, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which definitely take more than an hour, unfortunately. Uh, so maybe I'll do it in my own time or something like that. We'll see. But for now, check out those resources, check out those books, and come back next week for another uh, manga drawing lessons weekly. Thanks for coming, guys, and whoever's watching in the future, thank you for watching.